Whenever you're designing a new system, there are four categories you really want to keep in mind if you want to have the most optimal design of your system. The first is repeatability. You need a system that will produce consistent results over and over again. And if, if you don't have the mindset of keeping repeatability in the design, that'll fall away. Systems that don't have repeatability in them tend to produce scattered results. It's like a shotgun versus, versus a rifle. The goal of most manufacturers is to produce the same high quality product time after time. So you've got to keep repeatability in, in, in the design. The next one is reliability. If you don't look for the long-term result of this system being in place, not needing a lot of maintenance, not needing a lot of hands-on work, not needing a lot of replacement parts, then it's going to cost a great deal to keep it up and running as time goes by. Everything decays over time. You can't stop atrophy. But if you keep uh, the, the idea of reliability in play, then you can optimize the system to say, we need this level of quality in the design itself. And it'll, it'll pay for itself very, very quickly over time. Consistency is the next thing. You want to make sure that every system that you make is consistent as possible. That way, if you do need parts from a different manufacturer, that it's easily obtained. If, if you need service work done, it's easily repeated by the, the people doing the work. So consistency in the design isn't just the design itself, but how the design is going to work over time. And the last thing you want to have is accuracy. Accuracy allows the system to do what it's supposed to do within a very tight bandwidth of performance characteristics. If you, if you have that in there, it'll be like a cookie cutter. It'll just keep doing the same thing, giving you the same result, and you won't have a lot of waste material created. If you don't build in for that, just the opposite will take place. You'll be producing material that will be out of spec, out of norm, out of acceptance. It'll go to waste, it'll have to get recycled, your cost of ownership will go up, and your cost of goods will go up. So those four characteristics are crucial to a successful design of a system. There are other things that you can do to add to that. If you build in systems intelligence, then you can have a means of the system telling you in advance how things are going, or as it's actually going in situ, this is the right blend of chemistries, this is the right uh, level of moisture in the powder that you're going to make a pill out of. This is the right level of gases blended properly so that you'll get the re right result on whatever product that you're going to make out of it. If you've got these systems intelligence factors in play, then you'll know when something's falling off the, off the chart per se. You'll know if you're going out of the good go no go range before you get there so you don't have to have a catastrophic failure you can have the system actually tell itself open this valve more close this valve more let more of this in or, or you've got too much of that and it can self-correct and then communicate that to to the people that are operating the system even remotely they could be home at night eating dinner with their family and see that their systems are all running properly that can all be built into the design.